Perhaps the most unique feature of the HVX is its variable frame rate capability, where it has nearly a dozen different frame rates that you can select. So you can do over cranking or under cranking, all sorts of different features, all sorts of creative options. What you may not know is that the HVX is a lot more powerful than what it first appears. The menus give you the ability to choose 12 or 18 or 20 or 22 frames per second, that, that familiar settings that we know about in the frame rate menu, but you can actually get three dozen different frame rates in there. All you have to do is edit your scene files. We have a section on the DVD that talks about editing scene files. Here we're going to show you why. First thing you do, save your scene files from the HVX to an SD card. Using the card functions menu, go out and save your scene files. And then once you have them saved on that SD card, let's load them into a computer. You can also load them into a cellular phone or some other PDA or something that could read and edit text files. So it doesn't have to be a computer, but obviously computers are most convenient. So we put that SD card into the computer and then we run a text editing program. It could be Windows WordPad or it could be Notepad or whatever, but we just need to be able to edit that raw text file. So when you look at a scene file, you can see through here all sorts of different parameters and things that we could change. Not really necessarily any big reason to do that, except for this one, frame rate. On this one here, you can see this numeric value and you see that that numeric value does not correspond to the comment that they've made here. They say if it's 24 frames per second, that actually shows up as entry number 14. 14 is not 24. Well, the reason why this is, is because there's a wide variety of frame rates that we can map into the actual selectable frame rates. So here's the complete list of the frame rates that you can choose from. Anything from two or three or four or six or eight or 10 frames, any even frame rate from two up to 60 for the US version of the camera. For the European PAL Australian version, you get any even frame rate from two up to 50. Sorry, you cannot go faster than 50 on the European camera or 60 on the American camera, but you can get any even frame rate between there. Then you can also get a few odd frame rates, which include 3, 25, 23, and 27. Those are all available in both versions of the camera. So what you do is you change this frame rate to a number that you want to use, save that file back out to the SD card, and then we'll pull the SD card out, plug it into the camera, and when we go to load the scene file, you'll see that now our new frame rate is enabled. Now, a few things you need to be careful of. If you go into the frame rate menu and try to change that frame rate, if you're on a non-standard frame rate, for example, like four frames per second, and you try to change it using the menu buttons, you won't have access to that unusual frame rate anymore. You will have to reload from the SD card to get that unusual frame rate enabled again. Now, the best usage of these frame rates is when you combine the scene file frame rate with the SynchroScan shutter. So we can do amazing time-lapse photography getting half-second exposure times. So if we put the camera on two frames per second and we put the shutter on 350 degrees and you have to change the shutter down here, make sure that it says 350.0 degrees, then if you go out and shoot traffic or something like that and, and cars are driving by and the lights are leaving these wonderful streaks on your image, it looks fantastic. So using these variable frame rates, you have 35 different frame rates you can choose from. It provides a lot of creative potential that otherwise you wouldn't have access to. We do have to caution you that this is an unreleased feature. It is not documented by Panasonic. It is not supported by Panasonic. So you do so at your own risk. If you choose to employ these variable frame rates and something happens or you lose your footage, obviously we can't be held responsible and Panasonic will not be held responsible. You do so at your own risk. With that said, I have run into a few P2 Micon errors on certain frame rates. For example, like 27, if I try to record 27 frames per second to the card, it doesn't appear to work. But most frame rates do. I use two frames a lot. It's never caused an issue. It works great. So these are a lot of new frame rates that you can use to express even more creative capability and creative options with your HVX.